we return to the topic of voter lists. Mr. Kersmel. Thanks very much, and thanks for indulging me since I have to uh, depart imminently. A um, number of the points that we would make have already been made, so for the sake of brevity, I just want to make one discrete point. Uh, in addition to the points that were cited by the panel proceeding in the previous panel related to voter lists, and that is the issues with respect to potential uh, problems related to uh, privacy issues, confidentiality issues, uh, fraud and abuse, potential the, the employer liability issues for inadvertent or intentional disclosure of information. The one discrete point I would like to make is that the rules in some respects seem to create more problems than they solve with respect to the voter lists. In this particular respect, there's a presumption on the part of the rules, and I think it's a false presumption, that employers either uniformly or to a great extent maintain the requested information electronically or if not electronically in a format readily available for submission to the board. And I think that's a faulty presumption, regardless of whether it's electronic, regardless of what the format is, regardless of what the available information is, not just from the standpoint of the smaller employers, but also for larger employers as well. Employers, regardless of size, maintain records in a variety of formats. Producing such records may seem simple to some, but as I mentioned earlier um, in my testimony this, earlier this afternoon, the individuals in some employer locations are not human resources personnel. There may not be standing human resource departments for a given employer, and the person who's in charge of personnel matters is the same person who is, I think I mentioned earlier, um, signing bills of lading or repairing the tow motor. So for that person to produce the requested information and it's unclear in what format it's supposed to be within the two-day time frame is a bit of a challenge regardless of even the size of the employer. Moreover, the provision of the sense of information, email addresses, telephone numbers, uh, and the like, could render the employees vulnerable to harassment or worse. There's a wealth of information that's being provided, and Ms. Davis talked about that earlier, and the access that email information could provide to bad actors, whether those bad actors be employees, employers, unions, or fourth parties or fifth parties who may get access to that information, especially when you consider not just email addresses, telephone numbers, but shift information. That gives people a time frame. It gives them a picture for where the employee may be, where he's likely to be in the next hour, two hours, and unscrupulous individuals would have access to that information. The risks associated with the proposed rules, uh, I think, would outweigh the ostensible benefits from any increase in inf in, of that information. And the National Association of Manufacturers uh, would submit that there's little in terms of the NPRM that shows a demonstrable need for changing the current status of the law related to Excelsior lists. Thank you very much. Thank you.